Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, in just a few days, we will have the new Congress be sworn into power, which means we are getting a handful of new representatives in the House, as well as seven new senators. Five of them are going to be Republicans. Now, you guys seem to like the tier list quite a bit on this channel, as do I, because they are fun to do. And, you know, if you guys want to do the tier lists, you guys can as well. I'll put the link in the description for you guys to do them. But I think we're going to rank all seven of them. Five of them are Republicans. Two of them are Democrats. I think you guys know what tier that they are going to be going into. But nevertheless, we are going to rank them. We're going to give a brief analysis of the incoming senator class, and sadly, there should be a lot more. We understand that the Republican Party vastly dropped the ball, and we'll likely be talking about that a little bit more in the New Year's video, which is going to be epic when it does indeed come out. But first, I have to tell you guys about My Patriot Supply, because at any moment, somewhere around the world, the next shoe is going to drop and all hell will break loose. So are you ready? What if there are sudden food shortages that last for weeks or months? Do you have enough food on hand to feed your family when grocery store shelves are completely empty? If not, take our advice and go to preparewithredeagle.com. You'll find a special offer from My Patriot Supply, the nation's largest preparedness company with millions of families already protected. They're slashing $100 off their four-week emergency food kit and $200 off their three-month kit, providing delicious, easy-to-make breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks for four weeks per person. These four-week food kits are in stock and ready to go. You could not only save 100 bucks, but your order ships fast and free and arrives in unmarked boxes for your privacy. Go to preparewithredeagle.com. Those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. Are you? Preparewithredeagle.com. So, we're going to start and we're going to rank these senators right here. We're going to start off with Eric Schmidt. We're going to go alphabetical order by first name because... That is how the picture is saved when uploaded to TierMaker.com, which is what I use to make these tier lists. So we're going to start off here with incoming Missouri Senator Eric Schmidt. Now, I'll be honest, I had a favorable view of pretty much everybody in that primary when the primaries were taking place. Now, I will say that the way the Republican Party in Missouri treated Eric Greitens was awful. And we know that now because he's been confirmed innocent and all the people that were out there whining and yelling about Eric Greitens were proven wrong and it makes them look terrible in retrospect because they were doing everything they could to slander a man who was innocent. But still, Eric Schmidt is very decent on the issues. He was my second choice in that primary and I think that he is going to make a fantastic senator. He was a good attorney general. He campaigned. He hit on all the right cylinders policy-wise. And I think that he will be there with Josh Hawley and arguably one of the best Senate delegations that will exist in the entire country for at least the next several years or so. So I think that we're going to put him up in the A tier. But again, these are subject to change. I'm sure we're going to have some people that are going to come along and surprise us and govern better than anticipated. We're also going to have some people end up being letdowns as well. So up next, we have J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance won his Senate race in Ohio. He won it by seven points. And looking at it in retrospect, he actually performed pretty well, all things considered. And potentially, it might warrant a video or a documentary-style video essay on J.D. Vance. He didn't exactly campaign a whole lot down the stretch. He still won by seven, which says something because the total generic ballot in the state of Ohio shifted to the left by more than Vance underperformed Trump by, which really does say something uh, about the state of Ohio. It's moving to the right, but Vance is also somebody who went up against the Democrats' best recruit. He still performed fairly well in the state in a year where Republicans didn't do that well all throughout the Rust Belt. But furthermore, it's deeper than that. Vance used to be a never-Trumper, used to be more of a neocon on the neocon side of things, probably around 
four or five years ago or so, but he's vastly evolved on the issues, and, and I've seen him change significantly. He hits on all the right cylinders regarding immigration, regarding trade, regarding foreign policy, regarding culture, uh, regarding even he's hitting on issues that he's bringing into the forefront that weren't really in the forefront to begin with, like the whole pornography epidemic. He's been one of the leading voices uh, against that in terms of the members of Congress or the senators that we do have or will have, that is in the case of Vance, because he's not in the Senate yet. But he's definitely going to be one of the best senators, arguably the best senator that the Republican Party will have in power come January 3rd. And that is a very good thing. But I may make a video just on Vance alone, on his candidacy, about how that's the winning formula uh, for Republicans and that he's living proof that shying away from the issues that matter is a horrendous strategy. And he arguably could have won by even more than he won by to begin with. Speaking of people in the Rust Belt who outperform people's expectations, we could start off with John Fetterman who is going to go in the F-tier for obvious reasons, F-tier for Fetterman. And that is true, the guy cannot string together coherent sentences, but apparently the people of rural Pennsylvania didn't exactly care about that, given the fact that Dr. Oz said some liberal things five or ten years ago. Uh, but that's really besides the point. This guy's going to be the face of the Democrat Party in the United States Senate, over the next six years, and arguably that could work to our advantage because he is such a laughing stock, he is such a lol cow, but do the voters even care at this point? Apparently not from what we saw out of Pennsylvania, but it also just shows how broken the Republican Party truly is in these places. Donald Trump is not going to be on the ballot every election cycle to bail you out or to make it competitive in a lot of these upper uh, Rust Belt states, and Pennsylvania is indeed one of them. But it's an utter train wreck uh, in the case of John Fetterman. He's very far left on every issue. It's not even like he pretends to be this moderate. He'll LARP and do the blue collar thing with his uh, his Carhartt hoodie that's oversized and he's like the 6'9 ogre or oh, big dude equals safety, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, he's going to be an utter train wreck. So up next we have Katie Britt. We're going to put her in the B tier for Brit, but it does go deeper than that for why she is in the B tier. I'm not putting her in there because it's like, oh, it's a frivolous ranking. I'm putting her in the B tier because we just don't know. She has been somebody who worked for Richard Shelby, who was for many years a neocon and a rhino in the United States Senate. And this is very true. She also was early on funded by a lot of these same mega donors that are aligned with Mitch McConnell and that are aligned with Richard Shelby and all of these other people. But her messaging was nearly pristine on the campaign trail, and I will say that she did very well in her primary, she did very well in her election, and given the fact that Mo Brooks now has deteriorated and sounds like a member of the Lincoln Project, apparently her winning over Mo Brooks may have actually been a good thing. So it's more of a we'll wait and see, we'll see how she governs, because she has been hitting on all of the right cylinders lately, but there's still a lot that we don't know about her uh, in order for me to say, oh, she's going to be great, or she's actually going to be an America First Senator the way that she campaigned, it's more of a wait and see, I'll give you a better answer in probably a few months type of thing. So up next, we have none other than Mark Wayne Mullen. And Mark Wayne Mullen is the newest senator in Oklahoma. He replaced Jim Inhofe in that special election earlier this year. And he is somebody with a mixed track record, definitely. There were not a lot of, like, perfect options, and there should be. This is Oklahoma we're talking about. This is not some, you know, Biden plus five state. This is a state that voted for Donald Trump by 30 points. It's ancestrally Republican, regardless of whoever the Republican Party puts up, especially for a federal office such as U.S. Senator. The Republican is going to end up doing very well. And he ended up getting the nomination, and he ended up winning in the general election. Now, I will say this about Mark Wayne Mullen. He did that whole neocon stunt going to Afghanistan, putting our nation at risk uh, back in mid-2021, and putting himself at risk as well. It was a very dumb publicity stunt thing to do. He's also somebody that 
has caved in on some spending bills and things like that. He has uh, even the VAWA, the reauthorization of VAWA that put men in women's shelters. He voted for that as well. So he's caved on some legislation. I think he's going to be a below average senator. And I think he needs to be put in the probably C to the D tier. Uh, I, I don't know exactly which one. We'll put him in D tier. We'll kind of fill this out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, he'll be in D tier. So up next, we have Peter Welsh, who is a Democrat senator for Vermont. I don't even think I need to elaborate anymore. He basically has the same policy positions that Fetterman has overall. He's going to be going in F tier. And lastly, we have none other than Ted Budd, the senator-elect from North Carolina. He ended up winning by around three to four percentage points, which was more than Trump won the state by, but at the end of the day, he didn't exactly win by a massive margin either and underperformed the polls. Now, granted, he was outspent by 10, 15 plus million dollars or so, but still, it doesn't matter. He should have performed better than that. But still, that doesn't take away from the fact that he is going to be a very decent senator. He's very good on all the issues, immigration, uh, trade. His only blind spot is foreign policy. He's had a few iffy votes there. Uh, so maybe he's not exactly going to be perfect. But for North Carolina, he's going to be very decent. He is America first on plenty of issues. So we are going to be putting him up in the A tier with Eric Schmidt. I think he's going to be a better version of Tom Cotton, if not a much better version than Tom Cotton. We'll really have to wait and see what happens. But anyways, guys, this is your Senate freshman tier list. Vance is up in S tier, Schmidt and Butter in A, Brits in B. We're leaving the C tier empty. We have Mullen in D tier. And then way down there in the F tier, we have John Fetterman and Peter Welsh. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.